So millennials, here's the facts. You have more bachelor's degrees than any other generation in history, but you also have the highest debt. You have no retirement savings. You have no savings really at all. You can't buy a house because you didn't save any money. You're 401k dependent. You can't hold a job to save your life. You're dependent on technology. What about marriage? Well, you're most likely to be divorced and you're probably not likely to marry and you're less likely to have kids. But it's not your fault. My name's Chris Noggle and this is What Now? What's Next for you millennials? Hey, I wanna teach you something that you can learn from. And to do that, what I need is I need you to do what everybody else is willing to do. And that is subscribe right here to this channel. And while you're at it, right above there's a little bell. Smash that bell and make sure you slip that left, ooh, I said slip the left hook. Well, that'll heal, but let's get back into it. This video is for all of you millennials. I'm gonna slam you because here are the facts. You are the microwave generation. Literally, the microwave generation. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means you want everything right away. You want faster promotions. You want your food cooked in a flash. Every second, you're pulling your phone up. Oh, did somebody text me? Oh, did they like me? Why did that person unlike me? Do they not like me? Oh, do you think they're gonna like these jogging pants? Do you think they're gonna like this outfit? Why do you care what other people think? But let me give you guys some props because millennials have the most bachelor degrees of any generation in history. I mean, come on, that's awesome. But what does that mean? Well, let me just read to you what that means. It means you have the highest amount of debt. It means most millennials don't have any money saved for retirement or hardly any money saved at all. What else does that mean? Most millennials can't even buy a house unless mommy and daddy pay the down payment. What else? Well, means you're 401k dependent, meaning you don't know how to save money or do anything else outside of put money in a 401k because you're the microwave generation. In a 401k, they've made it so easy, all you need to do is get hired. And after the pandemic, it was pretty easy to get hired because nobody wanted to work. Oh, I'm sorry, actually, a lot of millennials didn't wanna work or they wanted to hardly work or, I'm sorry, they just can't hold a job. That's one of the facts. Not only that, dependent on technology, in other words, I'm sorry, are you talking to me? Text me. Actually, DM me. I'm not your friend on there. Wait, why are we not friends? Hold on, I'll friend you. Wait a second. You like that person? All right, I'm unfriending you. Uh, this is another statistic. Uh, most millennials are likely to divorce or not marry at all. We're gonna hit that not marry part in a second. And they're less likely to have kids. And we're gonna hit that too. But here's the good news. It's not your fault. It's our fault. That's right, it's your parents' fault. It's your parents' fault because they've made things too easy. They've literally defined the microwave generation where all you need to do when you're hungry is just pop something in the microwave, a couple seconds later, maybe a minute, it's done. What happened to the good old days of actually cooking food and being patient and actually going outside and playing and doing things? Listen, I'm not saying my generation was the best or the generation before me was the best, but let's just hit it home right here. Millennials are But what else did your parents tell you that you had to do that led to those statistics? Well, you were told to go to college. That's the only way, right? You had to go to school if you were gonna be successful. So, so many folks went to school that now it doesn't matter that you went to school and got a bachelor's degree. You're just like everybody else. And the other problem is your parents didn't make you work when you were a kid. They didn't really make you do anything. Maybe, maybe a few of you had to make your bed. Maybe you had to clean up your room. Maybe you had to clean up after yourself and the toys. But what else did you really have to do? Did you have to go out and actually work in the field? Did you actually have to go out and work so that your family could eat? You know, older generations, that's what they had to do. The kids, and that's why they had so many kids, worked in the field. And they were a part of the family dynamic that allowed that family to actually survive. But what else? The education system failed you. You were taught that if you just went to school, got a degree, everything would be okay. And then it wasn't. You got out of school with lots of student debt, which buried you. So then when you went to work, you, you felt like you had to make a lot just to cover your debt services. And you didn't make a lot because right out of school, you started at the bottom. But then you were told that debt 
was the only path. When you wanted something, if you didn't have the money, you just swiped the credit card. So you started building up credit card debt. And that credit card debt also buried you. And then you had to have a car to go to work, so what'd you do? You went out and you financed or leased a car. More debt on top. So by the time you actually hit the working force, you were so buried in debt from student loans, car payments, credit card payments, that you barely had a chance. To be quite honest, millennials, you were dealt an unfair hand. But a lot of people would say that prior generations were dealt an unfair hand because they had to work when they were 14. Now, I'm Gen X, so I'm hardly old, but I, at 14, I went to work on a farm. I went to work on a farm because mom and dad didn't have any money to give me. If I wanted something, I had to find a way to pay for it, and that was the only way. But you know the best part is? I loved every minute of it. And I learned work ethic. So when I actually hit the workforce, I was ready and able and conditioned to outwork everybody else. So I was willing to do what everybody else was unwilling to do. And I think that's where you were dealt a poor hand. You weren't taught how to rise above. You were just taught to follow what you were told, which led you to be severely in debt and also didn't give you the skills to rise up and take over. But here's also why it wasn't your fault. Right when you were ready to start getting to work, the Great Recession hit and there was no jobs. So you literally were ready to go. You had all these debts and a recession hit you. But that recession came and went and some of you probably were too young to even remember it or even feel the impact of it. So then what happened after that? Well, we entered the good times when everything seemed to be good, but then COVID hit. And after COVID, they printed a bunch of money which jacked up inflation. And now everything got more expensive on top of all the debts. And then just recently, all those student loans that you didn't have to pay for for many years, now you had to pay for them again but you weren't even really given a fair shot to get ahead. At least some of you weren't. And one of the things I said earlier, which I wasn't beating up on you or not trying to, is that you can't buy a house. Well, look at the price of houses. No wonder you can't buy a house. You literally have almost been priced out of buying your own home. The American dream back in the day was home ownership. Millennials, to buy a home, the median home price in 2023 is somewhere around $450,000. Figure out what the down payment on that is and well, because you don't have much in savings because you were burdened in debt because that's the path you were told to take. Now, what are you doing? You're renting. Most of you are renting. Unless your parents ponied the money up for a down payment, that was your only path. You were given a really bad hand. You also were brought up on technology as if technology was the only way, which has really hurt your social skills. Because the only way a lot of millennials communicate with somebody else is through a computer or a phone. It's not like the old days where you actually went out and met people, when you actually were out riding your BMX and that was what you did. Instead of sitting there on games or on phones or social media, when you wanted to hang out or meet your friends, you got on your bike and you went to their house or you went and played ball or you did something. All of that now has been replaced by technology, which has also put the strain on the family dynamic because families don't communicate like they used to. I see it all the time. Whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas, all the millennials, all the younger folks are sitting there buried in the phone. And when you look at the grandparents, what are they doing? They're actually talking to everybody else or at least talking to those that aren't buried in their phone. What is that doing to society? Actually, what is that doing to the world? Let me point out a much bigger dynamic, a more important topic. I'm not trying to roast millennials, but millennials right now are the single most important generation this country and this world has ever seen. Do you know why? Well, there's a book I'm reading. It's called The End of the World is Just the Beginning. The world isn't really ending, but it sort of is. So let me explain why you're the single most important generation in history. It's because there's not enough people in the world to support the growth. Look at countries like Japan. It's an aging demographic. There are more people retiring than there are being born. There are more people dying than there are people being born. You can't grow an economy. You can't grow a country when there's not as many people in the workforce to satisfy the jobs available. How about China? China peaked, peaked in the 1990s. What does that mean? Well, the same thing. China told many of their citizens not to have more than one child. And what did that do? Well, it stunted their growth, or it will. By 2030 and 2040, China 
cannot grow because they don't have enough people in their workforce. There's not enough young folks to replace the working force people today. How about Italy? Are they just not having kids there? There's, there's literally for several months not been any kids born. This just in, I just heard that in Italy for three months straight, there's not been a single child born. I don't know if that's a fact. We can, we can research that, but I'm trying to point out that the rest of the world, with the exception of only a handful of countries, they're dying on the vine. There are not enough younger folks to replace the people in the workforce. So that means those countries simply fail to exist in the future. They can't grow. This right here, Italy achieves an unthinkable world record. Yeah, you think this is a good thing. No child births in three months. What are they all drunk on wine? Because that's happening worldwide, you have an aging demographic. These countries can't grow, but I will say here's the good news. The United States of America. Let's just point out some of the facts about the United States of America, the country you live in, the country that you are deemed a millennial in. The United States of America has more land to develop. That's right. We are not bursting at the seams. We still can grow our population. Not only that, we have more resources in this country than any other country that exists. We have more food, we have more natural resources, we effectively could be self-sustaining, and we can grow. We can afford, through resources and food, to grow our population, which is necessary for the growth of the country, the growth of the economy, the growth of productivity. But the buck stops at you, millennials. The buck stops at you. Because if you don't have kids, and if you don't work hard, and if you don't see that this is the single greatest opportunity in your life, the United States is also doomed. Because even though you were born with all those things I mentioned against you, you have the single greatest opportunity because all the older folks that hold those positions, that run those big companies, soon they will age out, they will retire, and who's going to step in their place? Look in the mirror you are if you get out of your own way if you realize the opportunity that exists and if you realize that all you need to do to seize this opportunity one of the i think this is seriously one of the greatest opportunities this country and probably this world has ever faced seriously that's the magnitude of this and it all is right on your shoulders don't think of that as pressure think of that as you have the ability to make more money to do more to be more than any other generation throughout history. The baby boomers, they don't even compare to what you have ahead of you. But here's what's gotta happen. You gotta get out of that phone. The phone is the future, but you need to focus on how you can do what everybody else is unwilling to do. You gotta look at the competition, because this is competition. It's you versus your other millennial friends. Yeah, the ones that you talk to online. It's you against them, because you gotta outwork them. Because the only way you take those positions, the only way you rise up, is to do the, almost the exact opposite of everything you've been taught to do. So let me just paint the future for you a little bit. They call it the gray tsunami. Baby boomers and the silent generation, eventually they're gonna start passing away. And they are going to leave what will be the largest wealth transfer in history. And the majority of that wealth transfer lands in your pocket. But if you keep messing up like you did during the pandemic, when everything crashed and burned, when stocks dropped in price, real estate dropped in price, and what did you do? You took advantage of that. Many of you did. Many of you didn't have the money to do it, but you thought, wow, that would be cool. That's coming again. Because mark my words, there's another recession coming. And although you may not have much in savings, although you may not have much in retirement, although you may not own a house, if you prepare right now, and you see this opportunity, and you take advantage of this opportunity, you will be wealthier than any other generation in history, and it's not just because you were handed an inheritance. It's because you know when the opportunity exists. COVID in the pandemic was just a learning experience for you. The 2008 recession, ah, so far in the past, and all that was is a learning opportunity. You watched your parents struggle. Maybe you had to bear the weight of that a little bit, but all that did is prepare you for the biggest opportunity, which is the recession that's right on the horizon. That's where you get to rise above. That's where you get to be the person you've always wanted to be, the, 
That's where your dreams literally happen. But they don't happen staring into a phone. They don't happen blaming other people. They don't happen when you just sit there and say, I want to work less, not more. When you just sit there and say, I want to do as little as possible and just go travel the world and do this and just do that. No, this is your time to understand you got to be more. You got to do more. We are entering a new era of what I would call money making madness. And you got a front row freaking seat. Don't blow it. Get to understand how money really works. Learn how to be in control of your money. Learn how you can become your own bank so that you never have to rely on a banking institution which is rigged against you. So you never have to rely on Wall Street which is rigged against you. Learn how to turn the tides in your favor. It's very simple. And it starts with just changing where your money goes first. Stop relying on banks. Stop relying on Wall Street and advisors to give you the advice that's gonna make you wildly successful. That advice won't work for you. But what I teach will. And it's not because I'm tooting my horn or sitting there saying that I know the path, but you know what? The path isn't just what I know. The path is what you need to learn, and that is you need to take back control of your money. And even if you don't have any money today, well, statistics say you don't, you soon will. Because when that wealth transfer kicks in, it's not gonna stop for the better part of a decade. So there will be a decade of, well, it's raining money, baby. And that money's gonna rain down on you. But don't become a statistic. Don't get the money and blow the money on fancier things. Here's something you need to learn. And I'll ask you in a question. What is the difference between being rich and being wealthy? If you can't answer that, I'll give you the answer. When you're wealthy, you have learned how not to give money back. When you're rich, you just look rich, which usually is a house of cards. So which one do you wanna be? You wanna look rich and actually not be rich? Or do you wanna be wealthy and keep the money that you've made so that you can continue to have that money make more for you in the future? So millennials, I don't know how else to say this. Stop up. Start realizing the opportunity and start doing something to put yourself in a position of power. Put yourself in a position of success. It's not gonna be very hard for you. It was a lot harder for me. It was way harder for my parents. It was way harder for our grandparents. It's gonna be way easier for you. But just as easy as it's going to be, it's gonna be that easy for you to throw it all away. Your bachelor's degree isn't going to get you where you need to be. Learn how take advantage of this next wave of opportunities and you will be more successful than you ever dreamed you could be. Here's something really fun I did for you. I made this video right here. You probably like fast cars, so wouldn't it be nice to learn how to get all the money back for every sports car you ever buy, drive, and own? Check this video out and let me know what you think in the comments. This is what now. What's next for you, millennials? See you on the next one.